in this video we'll create some jump scares for the player. Now let's select all of the furniture objects. Grab all of them. And then add a component, we'll add a mesh collider so our character can collide with the object. And also noticed here for uh, these objects, it has um, child objects. So this basically is a folder and here are the actual models. So you have to go into the folder, select them, and add mesh collider. Add a single bed as well. Okay. And here a kitchen cabinet. And here we go. So now our furniture has mesh collider and you can collide with our character. Um and let's also pack our door group so it's like the door hit F key focus create the empty object and here we'll see door group that way we can organize our scene a little bit and make the scene a little bit cleaner okay now let's go to our bookshelf and let's rearrange this book a little bit so here I'm going to uh, drop this down to this level and I'll go to the models and I'll drop in a book. Now let's um, drop the book on the shelf and let's rotate it. So here I'm going to put it 90 degree and rotate on this axis. So maybe here I'm going to put uh, 90. Here we go. Um, move it up and change the scale. Let's try one point for for XYZ so the scale should match and place it at this corner all right and now let's create an animation so um, I'll select this book press F key to focus on it and game object and create a 3d object a cube you can move this cube uh, closer to this book so we know this is for the for the book animation so we can see book anime right and let's see okay this cube is huge right now so we can scale it down okay scale it down a little bit and place it at the bottom the bottom of the book Okay, um, so now we can drop this uh, book underneath the book animation object. And we're gonna select the book anime object and make sure you are in book A group. So whenever you create animation, you're gonna be in this, uh, in this folder. And we'll go to the animation tab and create. And here we're gonna name it um, book drop, right? And then uh, start recording your keyframe animation and go to about frame uh, 50 frames. Uh, here we can go rotation. Here rotate, rotate maybe 90 degrees. So you're going to lay on the ground. Okay, and we can also move it a little bit. So now if I play, we'll have this animation. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too slow so I can get it to frame 20. And then let's start like the book, uh, the model, the mesh, and we'll apply a mesh collider so it can collide with our player. In any case, if our player touch it. Um, and here we're going to uh, create a trigger so whenever the player enter the trigger, the book uh, the book gonna fall. Uh, so we can go create a 3D object, a cube, and place it in front of the bookshelf. 
make it higher, wider, okay, and check off mesh render and check on is trigger, and we can rename this trigger as uh, trigger book job, okay, um, and at the same spot we're going to create a empty object, and I'm gonna name book job uh, sound. And here add a component, we're going to add a audio source. And we'll go to the project and go to the sound effects. Okay, and let's bring in book drop sound effects. Okay, and select this the sound object and we're going to uh, apply the audio clip onto it. So here let's uncheck the play on wake. So the sound will only play when it is triggered. And also let's go to the book enemy, it's animation controller. Okay. So open double click open this controller and we don't want the book drop animation to be played by default, right? So here we can create a uh, empty state and set this empty state as the default state. So whenever it is on code and you're going to play the book drop animation. All right. And then switch to the scene and select the trigger book drop and we're going to apply a script to it. Okay, so let's go to the script folder and let's drop in uh, the book drop script. And then select this trigger and we'll apply the book drop script. Okay. So here for enemy object, which is the book. And this trigger will be the trigger itself. And uh, the drop book sound will be here. And here's the script. So we declare three objects. Uh, the first object is the object that has the animation. So that is the book. And also this trigger, the trigger itself. Uh, and also the sound effects. Uh, so whenever a object tagged as a player enter this trigger, um, so you're going to grab the books uh, animator component and you're going to play the book drop animation clip. So that is the animation clip we created earlier. And also you're going to deactivate this trigger. Uh, so this function will not be triggered multiple times. And it will also play the sound effects. Now you should see that the book is keep looping the animation, so we can just uh, come back here, um, go to the book, the book drop animation, and uncheck the loop time. We can also bring the trigger closer to the bookshelf, right? And now let's do a test. Okay. Then let's go to the models folder and let's bring in the robot toy. And let's uh, drop this robot uh, um, in the bathroom. So we're going to scare the player once uh, the player enters the bathroom. Uh, we can make it bigger, maybe about 1.8 for both um, X and Y, Z. And we can rotate in 90 degree along the Y axis. So he's uh, facing the door. Here we'll create a material and say toy roba M for material and let's drop in the texture. So I want to use uh, no this is a D and this is okay this one. So basically the diffuse map. Okay and let's bring in the material onto the robot as you can see it gets some dirt on the surface and also drop the material on the eyes okay so here we want to create some animation we're going to animate the head okay so if you go to the group you can see the body and the head is uh, separated they are separated in mesh okay um so let's create the lights first um if you select the body press f to focus on it and then here we can create a 3d object 
a plan. Uh, by default, it should be huge, um, so we can make it smaller. And minus 90 degree, and bring it to the front. So just to fill the gap at here, okay? And we can see. Robot light one. Okay. And then we can create a lights for for the eye. So I'll go to the game object and create a 3D object. A sphere. And also make it a smaller. And let's insert it right there in for the eyeball so later on we're going to give it a, a self-illumination material so it will illuminate lights and we're going to use it to scare the player okay and here let's say light uh, 2 and then we can make a duplication and place it the other side all right can name this light 3 and here let's create a material and here we're gonna say toy robot uh, light and uh, we can give it a red color and change the shader to legacy shader and uh, self illumination and diffuse Okay, so as you can see, the self illuminate. Then let's uh, select this material and drop it to the lights. Okay. And let's select uh, the eyeball, press F key to focus, and go create a point light. And right now it's very intense. As you can see, we can bring it out a little bit and we can also change the range we don't need it to be that large bring it out a little bit and change the light to uh, red okay intensity maybe a little bit higher okay and uh, we can duplicate and bring it to the other side okay then here we can duplicate this light again and uh, place it on the chest okay and we can increase the intensity to make it visible and increase the uh, range a little bit so we can see some lights here Right, and then let's um, group them a little bit. So first, we want to break this uh, prefab. Right now, as you can see, the market has a blue color, so it means it's a prefab. So we can go to prefab and unpack it. Okay, and then we can uh, uh, parent these four lights together. So these are the lights for the for the eyes, right? So we can drop these three into this one so if I hide this point light as you can see I will turn off all of these four objects on the lights so I can see robot um, I lighting and for these two I can also pair them together and I'm going to rename it um, robot chest lighting Okay, and I will drop them into the robot group. And for the eye lighting, I want to drop it underneath a body. Oh, sorry. 
I want to drop it underneath the head. Okay, so that way if I select the head and if I go for rotation, as you can see, the lights will rotate with the head. Okay, however, the pivot point is a little bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, robot, press F key. Okay, and I will create a cube and make it smaller very small and then I will place it roughly around the robot's neck okay around here make it a little bit smaller and then I'm going to bring this uh, cube into here and I'll turn off mesh rendering okay and I'm going to drop the head into this cube so that way when I go for rotation see now the pivot point is here it's much easier for us to control the animation okay so I can see head group okay and uh, for the chest lighting you can do the same thing you can uh, drop it in under the body so in any cases if you want to animate the body um, you can animate the whole thing together All right so now let's move on to the next step so I'm going to select the toy uh, robot press F key and then I'm going to create an empty object okay and drop this empty object into the robot group and I'm going to name it to um, robot controller okay and here let's go to the script folder and drop in the robot flashing script into here okay and then we'll select this uh, robot controller and bring in the script so here as you can see we're going to assign the lights we just created so robot highlight which is here okay the robot highlighting and the chest light will be here okay and mean width time you can put 0 0.01 and the mean wax uh the, the max width time we can put 0.1 Okay, so now let me show you how it looks. Okay, so this will make our robot kind of flashing. Right, so now let's bring it to the next level. Go to the model and uh, the robots folder. And then go to the animation tab and select the, uh, the robot's head. Okay, we're going to create an animation clip. So here we're going to name it uh, Robot Head Turn. All right, and let's uh, record the animation and go to maybe frame 40. And we can rotate a little bit. So let's try minus 75. And then let's get more animation. So this is a 40 frames. So let's try 80. And then we can rotate to the other direction. So 90 plus 15. So that will be uh, 105. Okay. So this is the animation. Rotate this side, that side. Okay, and I think after this one, we all make it to turn back. Okay, so we're going to go to, um, let's see, 80, and then we add 20, so that will be 100. Okay, so at a 100, 100 frame, uh, we want it to turn back to 90 degree. 
Okay, here we go. So now let's play. Okay, so this will be a robot animation. And let's create one more thing. So let's select this uh, group, the robot group, and uh, create an empty object. And here we're gonna say robot sound and drop this into this group. And here we're going to add a component and we'll add a audio source. Okay. And then let's go to the sound effects. Okay. And we'll bring in the robot sound effects. Here we go. And select the robot sound object and drop this robot uh, sound effects, the clip, to the audio source. All right, so now we have all of these uh, three objects that uh, either has animation or has sound. Okay, and I want uh, I want the animation to be triggered. So here let's create a trigger in front of it. Um, so select this uh, group again and create empty. Actually, not empty. I want to create a a 3D cube so we can see it and let's bring it to the front so this will be the trigger so whenever our um, player enter this area okay the robot will be activate and it will play the animation to scare the player okay so this one I'm gonna say robot um, trigger robot active okay and we can bring this robot group down back a little bit now closer to the wall and this trigger back a little bit okay and then for this trigger I'm going to uh, turn off mesh render and check on its trigger okay and uh, I can also drop it into this group. All right, so now let's give it a uh, script function. So I'll go to the script folder and I'm gonna bring in the robot nothing script. Now let's apply the robot nothing script onto the trigger. And here's the script. So for enemy object, which will be the head group. Uh, since we have created the head turn animation for it, right? And this trigger will be the trigger itself. And the robot light control will be actually the controller, right? That, in, uh, that one has the flashing light script. Okay. And then, let's see, the last one will be the robot sound. Uh, so that will be here, the sound object. Then let's uh, turn off the chest lighting and also the eye lighting because these two lights are going to be activated by trigger, right? Uh, and also we're going to select this group and go to its animation controller and double click to open. Okay, and uh, we don't want this head turn animation to be played by default. So here we're going to create an empty state and set the empty state as the default state. So by default, the head will not turn. And once we enter the trigger, it's going to switch to this animation clip and play the animation. And also for the robot sound, okay? Uh, I don't want it to play on weak. I want the sound to be triggered. Uh, so I uh, turn it off and check on loop because once it is activated, I want it to loop the sound. All right, so now let's do a test. Okay, as you can see by default, uh, it's standing there still. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the sound object. And uh, right now, the distance is too much. You know, it can cover the whole scene, uh, which we going to lower it down to about maybe 10. 
Okay, so it still covers a big area. So maybe just about eight. And also I want to make it a 3D sound and change the volume roll off to a nanner roll off. Okay, so that way um, as the player is uh, far from the robot, uh, the player will not be able to hear the sound. All right, so here's the script. So basically we declare four objects um, and whenever a object which tagged as a player enter the trigger, uh, you're going to grab the enemy object's animator component and it's going to play the animation clip, which is what we created, robot head turn, right? And it's also going to activate the robot uh, light control, which is make it flashing, right? The lights flashing. And also this trigger is the trigger itself. We want to deactivate it so it will not be activated more times. And you're going to play the robot sound. And once the light control, robot light control is activated, here is this script. So robot flashing script, it will uh, be in, uh, in effect. Um, so here we declare two objects, which are the headlights and the chest light. And also we declare two float objects. So these float are the times, uh, uh, the numbers we can input. Um, so just to name it uh, mean wait time and max wait time. So we have put the two numbers, right? Here I can show you if I go to robot here and controller and here are the time, the numbers we have put. One is point uh, zero one, one is a point one. Okay. Uh, so what's gonna happen is whenever the game is start, it's gonna start a coroutine, which is uh, you're going to involve with the time, how much time you want to wait. Okay, so it comes here. Uh, so you're going to wait for uh, a specific time, which is a randomized time between this range. You know, between this range, which is um, 0 0.01 second to 0 0.1 second. Okay, so randomize the time, so you will pick up a time and then wait. And then come here, you're going to activate both the headlight and chest light. And then you're going to wait for a specific time again. So you're going to randomize the time. So pick up a specific time. And then after that time, you're going to deactivate both the highlight and chest light. And then you're going to come back again with a specific time, activate it, uh, and then wait, and then deactivate, and then come again. So that will make the light kind of keep turning on and off. In the next video, we'll add a ghost into the scene.